Eric Stone Street from Modern Family back here on the Rich Eisen Show in person. Thank you, sir. For coming in in person yeah, thank on you. this rainy day in you know, Southern I California. I heard you talking about the traffic, and I have mm -hmm. a different take. What's your take? Here's what you owe me. <laughs> a warm, cuddly, raining morning in bed. Mm -hmm. Because I did not want to get up out of bed this morning. <laughs> the rain's pitter-patting on my driveway and mm -hmm. my roof. My window's open. Oh. I'm comfortable under the sheets. Warm, and I'm like, warm. I got to go see Rich Eisen right now. <laughs> so you owe me a morning in bed, sir. Okay. And I mean that. You, me, in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let me check my calendar. Yeah, yeah, look as you get back to me on Because I'm real busy the uh, next couple weeks. But right. no, I, I know the feeling, man. I, I know the feeling. We don't get these that often, and you're so right about people driving out what here. What is with it's, that? And, and you think about it, it's like we're all from other places. It's like you get here. Yes. But we're guilty of it in another way. I remember moving to L.A. and thinking, like, ah, mm. look at all these people in coats. I'm never going to buy a coat. Mm -hmm. And I own a coat. It's and, 50 degrees and I'm cold. I'm like, what is wrong with me? And here's the, the thing I'm, I'm most ashamed about, okay? And you can relate to this since you're a season ticket holder at this place, is Dodger Stadium is truly one of the worst places to try and get in and out of. Oh, gosh. In the history of sports. Terrible. And I've, I grew up trying to get in and out of Giant Stadium. I once said on SportsCenter a line that, um, you know, Giant Stadium, leaving Giant Stadium is the only time you're jealous of Jimmy Hoffa because he's already home. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm a season but, ticket holder, and I've, pulled, I've gone to Dodger Stadium, and they don't have a place for me to park. I've, now, let's get into this. What are we talking about? I have pulled up. I, I've had say, so many stressful nights when the Dodgers have been in the playoffs. Of If I don't get to mm, Dodger Stadium yes. early enough, I don't have a spot in the lot that I'm assigned to park in. So then where, where do you got to go? You got to go. Well, where, I grease. You, 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 <laughs> you know. My dad taught me the power of a 20. Okay, that's right. Hey, Andrew Jackson yeah. talks is what yeah. you're saying. Well, you know, I always made fun of Los Angeles fans seeing, say, the Kirk Gibson famous home run when they widen out and you see all the taillights. Yeah. And I'm like, I would never leave a baseball game of that magnitude yeah. at all, ever. And now I'm like, you know, well, my, I am out of there in the seventh inning. Right. Well, my procedure is, depending on what the score of the game is, mm -hmm. I'll go up to the top and watch the rest of the, the, the end of the game from up top. But I'll do that, and people will still... Like, find me on Twitter and be like, oh, some fan you are, Stone Street, leaving in the bottom of the eighth, <laughs> top of the ninth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One night, my sister was with me, and she it was her idea to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, some guy was like, oh, yeah, way to go on set. I'm sorry. Yeah, my sister was with me, and she had diarrhea, so we had to leave. Because she, she, I read the Twitter to her, and she's like, well, just tell him your sister had diarrhea. I said, all right, well, <laughs> we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was about to say you have to get the green light from your yeah, sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't you can't tweet your sister. But it was her idea. Her, she's the one that said, well, just tell them that your sister had diarrhea and you had to go. Like, <laughs> okay, Mario, here we go. Because this is out there on social media. All right, and then you, Eric Stone Street, you always get the grief of like, okay, so you're big L.A. Kings, L.A. Dodger. Yeah. But now you're here in your Chiefs shirt. And you're, yeah. and, and People then the, don't understand. The Royals, you are, you can do both. I, I can be a sports fan. That's what I always say. It's like mm -hmm. I can go, I can, I can appreciate sporting events mm -hmm. from Kansas City. Love, I mean, I know you are, you are, you are dire. And I know, okay, this was from when, when was he? When, when were you on last? You probably don't. You, June 29th. Okay, before the Chiefs season started. June, well, before, before, you know, before, before, before the camp. break, before oh, the I last need, break. I need to do before this moment. Camp. You need to do this moment. Okay, roll the tape. Okay, go for it. <laughs> Look, the Chiefs are on. The uptick, no doubt. We've added some linebacker help. We've added some O-line help. And, you know, we outside speed, we have this new kick returner from uh, Western Alabama or whatever the college's name that's supposed to be exhilarating. Somebody said he was the most exciting player since Devin Hester, return man since Devin Hester, which I'm happy to have that guy on my team. Sure. There you go. You called a Tyreek Hill shot? I have sources. <laughs> I have sources. <laughs> he is unbelievable. He's unbelievable. And my sources had – my source mm – -hmm. Uh, had told me, wait till it gets cold and watch what Tyreek Hill does. I have it on text that this person was like, you think he's great now? Wait till it gets cold and watch what he does to other teams when it's cold. I mean, you were there in San Diego this past week. When Chilly, he, when, when he frighteningly <laughs> cold in San Diego. <laughs> but in all seriousness, the reason why I bring it up is that the only guy who could stop him was his own guy, and he ran him over too. Ran him over too. Yeah, he's a stud. I met him before the game. He's uh, you know. So he's a good kid because you know everyone's talking about his history yeah. every single time. Yep. I, I he mean, does I, don't know, anything. I don't know him personally, but right. uh, you know, you hope that people learn lessons. It's not an excusable thing that that mm. he did, but mm. um, he, he's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, and he's and he's a he, and uh, he's the reason why I think you've got yourself a shot. Really? Should you get into New England, I do believe so. 
because I mean, he it's him, and then the, he's not the only quicker than fast no. guy that they have on this team right now. Yeah, we 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 so. have the the play, the pieces in place to do it. Alex running the ball, I think, you know, I, I hated to see him running in San Diego, to be honest with you, but we needed to win that game. Mm -hmm. uh, but him running the ball, he was such a great running quarterback in college, and him bringing that element to the game is mm -hmm. is huge because he's he's sneaky fast and sneaky good. When was the last time you felt this way about the Chiefs? Well, I feel this way every year. No, I know that, but, but but you you see, this is yeah. different. This I, th I, I think this is different. It is different. more different than last year when when Andy Reid is still, I think, right now formulating the 17th play of the two minute drill right. that needed to go much right, faster right, right. in New England. Yeah, it just it just feels different. It looks different, and they have the two seed though too. They actually get a somebody's got to come to Arrowhead I after a week. I believe off. you know how uh, frustrated and angry I was that the Chiefs could have gone undefeated in the <laughs> AFC West and not been the AFC West champion. Guys, this is a funny story. This is because you thought. Just because they go undefeated in division, they should still win the division regardless of how many wins the Raiders had had. Yes. It does, win the it, division. It, it does on a level make sense. Like, it's college football. It's the Penn State uh, over Ohio yeah. State and Michigan rule. That they won the conference, they should actually have a better Ye playoff positioning. Yes, but when it's explained to you mm -hmm. by people that are more in the know, then it, it does make sense. Um Rich knows that I have, you know, become mm -hmm. friendly with the commissioner of football. Uh, that's a, it's a, it's a, it's there, is, a, there is no modest way to actually throw anyway. that out there. Uh, no, but he, he very graciously invited me to come to the Super Bowl a couple years ago as a guest because they're big fans of the show and they, because Roger Goodell loves Modern Family. Loves Modern Family. And Coach Cam. They, they love Coach Cam. Um, and, <laughs> So they had asked me to come to the Super Bowl, and I had just been on Jimmy Kimmel the night before talking about how I would never go to the Super Bowl until the Chiefs are in it. I'm, I have no interest in going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> Next morning, um, my manager calls and says, uh, hey, uh, Roger Goodell wants to call you. I'm like, "What for, for what? <laughs> it's like, he, he, they, his office called and asked for your number. I'm like, well, yeah, give him my number. So I answer the phone. He's like, is this Coach Cam? I'm like, uh, yes, it is. He goes, this is Roger Goodell. And I said, Commissioner, how are you? He goes, don't call me commissioner or I'm going to call you Coach Cam. And I'm like, all right, Roger. He's like, all right. So he invites me to the Super Bowl. And I said, Roger, I I, I so appreciate this offer. But mm -hmm. I just was on national TV last night saying that I'll never go to the Super Bowl until my Chiefs are in it. <laughs> um, so I can't now go back on that. And he goes, all right, if you want to wait that long, that's fine with me. Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, Roger dropping the goods. Goodell bomb. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, so from that, he, <laughs> oh he, he, he's a great guy. So, uh, you know, I, I bother him every once in a while on text. Yeah, and, and then uh, you, so you send me a text before, you know, the Christmas Day during game. During the Broncos game on Christmas night. Right. And you're like, how come? Livid. This, how come if we're, we're beating the Broncos and we're, we're going to lose this division? That's not right. No. And, I didn't. I don't think. It, I, I don't think it is. But, and, and you were like, why don't you? Run it up the big flag. Yeah, like I, I, I can't do anything. But you can actually run yeah. it up a flagpole where something can get done. No, not that. But ask the question at least. And I just, I, I did text him mm -hmm. and said, uh, "What do you say?" He said, "Man, Merry Christmas to you too." <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't take him up. You did not go to the Super Bowl. No, I will not go to the Super Bowl until the Kansas City Chiefs are in it. Wow. Absolutely, man not. of integrity. Okay. I, I don't have a dog. I don't. I don't. Like I'm too passionate about football to to go and I've gone to other games where I don't have a dog in the fight and yeah. it's it's fun but I, I can't I can't imagine going to the pomp and circumstance of the Super Bowl and my team not being in there. Had you not said that on Kimmel the night before? Yes. Would you have reconsidered and maybe taken them? Yeah, up? I probably would have had to reconsider <laughs> because of the invitation. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's a fair th thing too. But I'm not going back on that. Um, I have said that maybe I would go to a party on Friday night, but I will never go to the game until it's okay. Game. So you're you're saying there's a chance that you're I, in Houston I, this year? No, no. I was already in Houston for the Kansas State. Uh, Ooh. So if the Chiefs are in Houston, I'll be in Houston. If we'll the discuss aren't, that. I won't be. We'll discuss that more Kansas State conversation. Well, when we come back, we may or may not play the end of the Kansas State Kansas game. Oh. Wave that piece of red meat in front of Travel the red wearing Eric Stone Street. Kevin Costner also still to come in your phone calls. 844-204-RICH here on the Rich Eisen Show. The rules to basketball are written in the lobby of Allen Fieldhouse. <laughs>
<laughs> where a four-step travel, Eric Stone Street, was yeah. not called. Yeah. yeah. You know, listen, I tweeted after the game, congrats to KU. I mean, clearly, that didn't... De- that determined when the game ended. It didn't determine whether KU or K State was play win. better than the refs. Ref, yeah, I, and I said you gotta. If you're complaining about the refs, you didn't. You clearly didn't play well enough, and that's the case. And I think any basketball coach, football coach, will tell you this. To, you know, I think that's the that's the the line to toe. Having said that, you know, the Big Twelve said there will be no statement because traveling is a judgment call, and it's hard to tell in real person. <sighs> except for what I told you before is like it's it's the end of the game. That's when your judgment should be the most clear yes. and precise focused and if and if you if you got a guy traveling down running down the court and takes four steps to win the game mm-hmm. and you and your judgment isn't on point then then we have a we have a, a little bit of a problem but i love i've hadn't heard that one before that the the rules of basketball are written in the actual field house yes they are that, they're that in the lobby pl- of allen field house <laughs> that, that took place they in. invented the game so they oh know the rules my gosh. but you know bill self is a classy guy and and he said the same thing and 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 bruce weber is the same thing it, it, it it ha- everybody knows what happened. Yeah, play better, and that doesn't that doesn't affect the outcome of the game. The refs didn't cost K State the game; they just ended the game before it needed to be. In. I mean, we could have lost in overtime. And then Bill Snyder just keeps on. Bill Snyder keeping on. He's amazing, right? Yeah, and your face just lit up when we when well, I. Well, he's such it. a good. I mean, you know, there's not many guys that are still coaching the way he coaches, which is he's coaching life and using football as his tool. You know, I mean, he is an old school guy. He wants kids there that he wants to improve their life and make their life better and give them the chance to succeed in life and using the game of football as his tool. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have just have so much respect for him and I love my college so much. I love going to those games. You know, I was telling you with respect to the Chiefs and Kansas State and all that, you know, people see me on the sidelines or do this and they have a comment about it. But I, I just always reflect back to how fortunate and lucky I am and what my 16, 17 year old self would say about the fact that I, you know, after the game, I get to high five the left tackle for the Kansas City Chiefs, Eric Fisher, whose birthday it is today, I think. Mm, yes. But it's like. The, <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's a left tackle for Kansas City Chiefs birthday today. So happy birthday, Eric, Eric Fisher. Uh, but, yeah. you know, like if had, had I got to high five John Alt when I was 17 years old in the tunnel at Arrowhead, mm-hmm. and I got to express that to Clark at the San Diego game, the Hunt, the Hunts are great family, great organization. And just how meaningful it is to me as mm-hmm. a grown freaking man mm-hmm. to get to be so um, involved and have such a, a meaningful spot, you know, and get to know players and th- stuff like that. It's a, it's my younger version's dream come true. Now, I, I love that you say that because, you know, obviously folks in your position being on a, a hit show and folks might just see your Twitter page or your Instagram at Eric Stone Street each time just think, oh, Here's a celebrity saying, here I am. You yeah. really do mean it. And I really and try to be respectful because it is their, it's their area. Like workplace. me going in the locker room is, un, I'm uncomfortable there. I don't want, I, I, I mean, I like seeing them on the sideline and saying hi and getting out of the way. I don't want to make it about me mm-hmm. or whatever. You know, Sharkandrick West gave me the game, you know, a ball before I the think, game. I couldn't say no. I had to accept it. <laughs> yes. And he just came up and handed it to me. And you should, I was just like, I, my friend that was with me, he said, I think stay, I think Eric thinks he's going to go into the game. Mm-hmm. I think he thinks he's playing. Look at this. He just walks up and hands me the ball. And there you are and taking a Kelsey. picture with Kelsey, right? I mean, come on. I'm 45 years old, and all I can think about is is me in high school as a season ticket holder in 19, you know, 91 in the corner of the end zone, mm-hmm. and and knowing that this was gonna, ha- it's a, it's amazing. And Kelsey, what he has become, he's a stud in he? this league, is really amazing. He was here in the off season in the summer, right? Yeah, yeah promoting catching Kelsey. Yeah. Kelsey. Well, how about that show? That what, was something else. Now, about. have you? Did you catch well, any of catching Kelsey? I caught a little bit of it, but I can't, I can't, I can't go down that path in my brain. I have to keep it. <laughs> You know, I have to watch. I have to do more Netflix type shows than those kinds of shows. Uh, but it was pretty interesting. I told him, like, look, he mm-hmm. world's his oyster, man. He's an entertaining, mm-hmm. funny guy. And we we're saying if he was, if we want him in Kansas City, he yes. belongs in Kansas City. But if he was in New York or Dallas or you know any of those other big market teams, yeah. he'd be on every commercial, and he will eventually get there. And that doesn't make it right. Mm-hmm. And if this ad agencies and everybody's listening now, he Travis, you know these guys are hilarious, and uh, or Travis is hilarious, and he deserves to be, have a bigger stage. Eric Stone Street here on the Rich Eisen Show. We had Ty <laughs> Burrell here a couple of weeks Who? ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we had Ty here a couple weeks ago, and he said that uh, Peyton Manning did only scenes with Ed O'Neill, so he didn't get a chance to meet him. You, you None never... of us got to meet Peyton Manning. What I happened? I have still yet to meet Peyton Manning. I've met Archie. Yeah. That's it. Not Eli. or Not Eli. Not Cupper. Nope. But So Peyton Manning comes to the set of Modern Family, yeah. and it was just him and Ed O'Neill, and that was and it? And Sophia was in the scenes. Okay. Sophia told me the next day, she goes, oh, my God, Ed... He was like a little kid with Peyton. He wouldn't let anybody else talk to him. <laughs> Is that true? Well, I, yeah, because, I mean, look, Ed's a big football fan, yeah. you know, and Ed had uh, narrated a Peyton Manning special uh, for NBC, That's so I'm right. sure they talked about that. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, she said you couldn't get close to Peyton because Ed was talking to him the whole time. <laughs> I'm like, well, I, w I can't say that I would have been any different. Ed O'Neill fanboyed him. <clears throat> I told um, Sophia, I said, well, just go over to Peyton Manning and say, Hey, Eric Stone Street is sad he can't be here, and he wanted me to give you a punch in the gut for all those years <laughs> at, 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 New, at, at, at the Colts and the, and the Broncos. Yeah. she wouldn't do it. Oh, she did not do that. No. So she did did not. She do did that not to Peyton punch Manning. Peyton in the gut Who on my would, behalf. So um, season eight, and you're, it seems like you're enjoying it. Just oh, as we much have as such you a good time, are, man. Right? Yep, we've been off for three weeks, and you know we we enjoy those breaks. But then we always look forward to coming back. I'll go back to work next week, and we have a funny episode coming up where uh, Fizbo the Clown's <clears throat> mm. uh, costume had been given away by Jesse Tyler Ferguson. Mm -hmm. And so this episode uh, revolves around uh, the episode's called Finding Fizbo. Finding Fizbo. And uh, Kelsey Grammer. Kelsey Grammer Kelsey, was, you see that? Can yeah, that? Kelsey Grammer. Was on last night. Is Unbelievable. As good as it gets. He's a big Dolphins fan, you know. So, Did I? I yeah, didn't know that. He's, he, he was there the very first game that the Miami Dolphins showed up in South Florida. Wow. Yeah, and Andy Garcia said the same story. He Isn't it amazing how these things happen? Well, he's a, he's he, a he, Dolphins fan. He is a diehard Dolphins fan, <laughs> Kelsey Grammer. So I guess you're kind of rooting for the Dolphins, because you, you'd like you'd like the winner of yes. Houston, Oakland, to go to your house yes. as opposed to Chris Brockman's Patriots house, right? Oh, the Patriots! <laughs> They're the greatest team, and Tom Brady's Tom Brady. Tom Brady is arguably mm -hmm. the greatest quarterback of all time. I would agree with that. Yeah, no you know, doubt. Right, but. And, is there a but? No, it, no. no but. I have nothing to say. <laughs> I have nothing to say. The only thing you can say. Yes is that the Patriots are the greatest mm -hmm. and Tom Brady's the greatest. Mm -hmm. Anything other than that, Chris will have something to say. Mm -hmm. And 25 million Twitter followers will yeah. light me up. Anything. <laughs> they'll, they'll jump out of nowhere. They're the greatest. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady's the greatest. Mm -hmm. That makes everybody happy. Uh, where where are you watching the, <laughs> where are you watching the Chiefs game? Do you know that right now? Or you could you get could you get there? I, I can get there. I'm waiting right yeah. now to kind of see how my ba back to Monday work. is because I'm back to work. Right. So I would have to go in and go out. Mm -hmm. Um I want to be there. But then there's a part of me. I was there last year in Houston, and we won. Mm -hmm. oh, playoff game, a, a, a second-round playoff game. Now, I've been around Arrowhead. you. I've been around you uh, with big regular season games mm -hmm. against Denver or what have you. Mm -hmm. or can you have people around you for a playoff game? Are you, you know, that type of if I'm watching or... it on TV, I don't probably really want that, that many people around. Mm -hmm. It's it's why I don't necessarily like going to football games because – I really like watching them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my time, that's why I'm on the sidelines at K-State. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, you know, because I can't really watch the game if I'm up in the suites sure. and talking about right. such and such. So I really like to watch it. I was just at the K-State bowl game. This is a funny story. You'll mm -hmm. like this. And this guy who works for K-State, he's a former player at K-State. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And now he's kind of in a pastoral sort of, uh, you know, role, liaison for the players. He walks up to me in the middle of the game. Now, it's a tense game. And mm -hmm. he walks up to me. He's like, are you all right? I said, yeah, why? He's like, I don't know. You don't look yourself. You you, you okay? Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, I think so. He goes, all right, don't go dying on us. And he pats me on the back and walks <laughs> away. And I'm like, I look up at the lights in NRG Stadium. I'm like, am I stroking out? Are these strobing? <laughs> like, what's going on? And then my hands start getting sweaty. So I walk over to my friends and I'm like, hey, do I look, is my color okay? And they're like, yeah, why? And I said, Jeff just told me I didn't look myself. And then he said, don't go dying on me. I'm like, he put me into a full on panic mode. <laughs> And then the doctors on the team were standing there, and I said, you mind taking my pulse, you know, here? And make sure I'm not, like, in AFib or something like that. And they're like, you're fine. But I, I, I had a panic attack during the middle of the game, and I was just inv involved in it. So, hmm. anyway, that, that happened. Maybe, maybe that's what he says to Bill Snyder every now and then. Hey, Bill Snyder is in <laughs> tip-top health, man. That, that confetti bath was one of the greatest yeah. things ever. Well, well, George Allen, I mean. Well, George Allen at Long Beach State caught pneumonia after he got 
the Gatorade dousing, and he yeah, but you, he passed away. A, but, we we always give grief to Terrell Davis yeah. that he uh, he because he was on that Long Beach State team that he offed George Allen. Oh my! But but hold on, it's a myth. You can't get sick from being cold. Mm, and I I I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on TV. But I'm myth. just assuming wet and cold though different. Sick right? as a virus. Yeah. You can't get viruses from just the cold. Thanks. I'll, I'll tell you what, the one way you can die in the wet and the cold is to drive in Los Angeles yes, in this way. You can you can do that. Thanks. Bring us all circle. full circle. Thankfully, Thankfully right. your show sent a nice driver to pick me up. Yes. So I uh just to recap, um you're fired up about your Chiefs. You will not be at the Super Bowl unless they make it. Now ever will I be at the Super Bowl. You will uh, text the goods and tell them we all said hello here on the Rich Eisen Show. <laughs> I, I will okay. tell him. Uh, I try not to bother him. He's a very busy guy. Can you and, call and, the goods right now? Uh, I would not do that. <laughs> no, I would not. Um, FaceTime? No, would I? No. No. Does no. he, does he no. want to hear our, our call to uh, John Voigt? Oh, yeah. They, they play the, we, uh, we had uh, we had Stephen Bauer on the show year, uh, months ago, and we had him call John Voigt on the spot. And this was a very big moment for me personally. Go for it. Uh, John, it's Rich Eisen. I'm a huge fan of yours, and I just wanted to say hello. That's all I wanted to do. Who? Uh, y- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're just yeah. setting yourself up, <laughs> man. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Great. <laughs> I wish I had my phone. We could go. We should do that next time. We'll go through and, 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 and figure out somebody to call. In the meantime, I owe you a nice warm day in bed. Yeah. And you I and intend me. to figure that one out. Yeah. Uh, check out Modern Family every Wednesday, uh, 9 Eastern time on ABC. Eric Stone Street here on the Rich Eisen Show. My mom's watching. Hi, Jamie. There. Hi, Jamie. Good to see you. And, and, and keep riding those and Hondas. Vince. Keep Hi, riding Vince. those Hondas. Um, when we come back, we'll take your phone calls. And it's Kevin Costner here in hour number three on the show. Is there another Secret Life of Pets coming? Yes. Oh, fantastic. I started recording it a couple weeks ago. How great is that? When does it come out? Uh, summer of 18. Okay. Wow. Yes. I, will, I will put my kids on alert. <laughs> yeah. Well, might be a little soon. No, they don't care. Did you? I, did, I'll send you the DVD of the first one. Did you get it? Uh, at any time. I'll send you one. I will. I, I mean, will, not that I, I'll, I'll just be have welcoming to go to Best Buy of it. and buy it myself. Right now, they're locked in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but I'll go to Best Buy and get you a <laughs> secret life of pets. No, no, please. I'll Amazon don't worry. it. I'll come over. We'll snuggle in your in uh, your. That'll, that'll be, our, be the that'll day. That'll be our morning in bed. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> this is really. By the way, that nice. that sounded like a Secret Life of Pets noise right there. Now, you go ahead and ask. Yeah, because Fizzwell the Clown, the character yeah. in Modern Family, is based off of you as a kid because you were you were into clowns as mm-hmm. a kid and you dressed up as a clown. A couple months ago, we kind of had this clown creeper scare. Yeah. How? What, what, were your, Pissed me off. what were your thoughts on all of this? It makes me mad. It, it angers me. It honestly does because, you know, cl- when I was a kid, there, I was, there was an article written about me in the Kansas City, Kansas when I was in fifth grade. Love it. Uh, and, and your mom it, clipped it out. And oh, everything, my right? God. It was, big, yeah, yeah sure. I still have it. I mean, that's the article that I took into the writers of Modern Family the first time they wrote the Fizbo episode is so they could see this, for, you know, and have perspective on it. But in that article, as a kid, mm-hmm. as an 11-year-old kid, I say, you know, if the circus called, I would go and get the experience that I needed, but I probably wouldn't stay. But all I ever want to do in life is entertain kids and older people. Now, I said that as an 11-year-old. What's funny about that is I said kids and older people, then that means no one in between. Like, I don't want to entertain anyone between kids and older people. But my point of that is, at 11 years old, I wanted to be a clown, and the reason I wanted to be a clown was because I wanted to bring joy to people's lives yeah. and make and make people forget things in the hospital and go in and do a little magic trick, go in and do a little you know, fall or a little balloon animal or whatever. And so the idea that the clowning has been hijacked you know, with this notion that they're scary bad people it it makes me mad because sure. most clowns just want to bring a little happiness to people and i have said for years and years and years oh i they get me going on this on modern yeah. this levitan loves to <laughs> prime this and get me going because it, i'm passionate about it you can see. uh the idea that you know clowns are scary to me was started off as a fad it's like it's cool to say you're scared of clowns mm-hmm. you know because most people really aren't scared of clowns i don't think they're scared of clowns. well because we're rational enough to know that it's just a person with makeup on sure that wants to just go ride a little car in a parade see look what you started <laughs> see even brown no, this is it. bull <laughs> see this breaks so many rules of clowning right here <laughs> who did this who put this makeup on you so did he, did here's, he... a, here's a basic rule red never goes above the, your top lip the rich eisen show Weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.